Hey, there's a whiskey review. Look at my big fat fucking head. Ooh, lovely. Hello again. I started recording a couple of hours ago. I opened up the uh, Tamnavulin whiskey. Poured myself Space Side Single Malt Scotch whiskey. And just like me by Christmas, it's in a box. Get out the box. Put it on camera. Right, don't be dumb. There it is, in all its glory. Ordinary box, distilled, matured, and bottled in Scotland. Double cask, American oak barrels with a sherry cask, cask finish. Um, it's from Ballindalloch, Banashire, AB37. What's that? Ab that's set up near Aberdeen, isn't it? Aberdeen. Aberdeen. So, let's just have a wee. It's all manly to use a knife, isn't it? On screen. Ooh, lovely. Oh god, yeah, you can definitely smell the sherry immediately. Definitely sherry cast there, yeah. May have had this before. Bottoms up. very smooth but last Christmas I had a bottle of sherry and yeah that's definitely that's definitely sherry very nice got a couple of ice cubes on the go and pour it in there have a leisurely drink open my brain up a bit then we'll come back and talk about it so And I'll pull up some details on it and let's learn some things about one another. There's no point in me describing what just happened because you've literally just seen it two seconds ago so I edited it. I've had a couple of the drinks. It's uh, it's it's pretty tasty. Um, I haven't actually uh, looked into it too much. I thought we'd do that uh, as a family. It's a space side. Uh, I think the most famous space side is Glenfiddich. My notes, basically, all I've written is um, it's a bad idea with ice, no taste, it kills the flavour. Because when I first opened it up, that first whiff, it was very much of sherry, the, the sherry, uh, the sherry casks. Um, still trying to American oak barreled. I mean, I mean, I'm, that's kind of you could say that about a lot of things. Uh, in the different casks, it kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit nice. But uh, to go back to this, I mean, the smells kind of, now I've opened it up, it's still that, still very much that sherry. It's a very easy drinking whiskey, and it's um, it's almost a little Christmassy. Now it's autumn outside; it's getting a bit cold, a bit a little bit windy. I did get those kind of aftertastes that made me think, "Oh, Christmas market!" You know that kind of warmth that you get. Um, so that is uh, that is quite nice. Um, it also is also it's also strong, so every this is why when they do tastes when they do tastings they spit it out because you need to get in order to be compass mentis you cannot be shit as fucking whiskey this is this isn't going to be a long review um certainly i don't feel like talking about a lot about what's going on in the world because it's just more of the same um anyway Space side single malt scotch whiskey. So I'm going to go from the shop front here. It's a double cask ABV. ABV. Double cask ABV. Doesn't ABV mean that's something to do with the alcohol and the volume, isn't it? 
No, it doesn't matter. I'm not a real scientist. Matured in American oak barrels for a sweet, mellow taste. What I've got, what I've got here is, um, um, it's just with a splash of water, just kind of open it up a bit. Uh, matured in American oak barrels for a sweet, mellow taste, with a rich, smooth sherry cask finish. Yeah, Colour amber gold. Mm. Nose. There we go. Nose. Rich. Yeah, what does that mean, rich? Yeah, it is rich. I mean, my first experience of liquor uh, was like, you know, Christmases at my nan's, and she used to get the little um, um, chocolate, you know, the chocolates that were filled with, like, like whiskey and Baileys and sherry and all that, and you say, you can't have too many of those. It's like, uh, that's probably the beginning of my demise as a human being and a man. Who knows? Maybe. But anyway... My point being, uh, nose rich, uh, that kind of conjures up that kind of smell, that kind of uh, chocolatey liquor kind of, and you have, to, and it was typically uh, like a teacher's or a bell's kind of whiskey, and and Bailey's of course is uh, uh, starts with whiskey, uh, mixed with cream and that, but um. It says warm aromas of apple. <laughs> I suppose I could get that. I was gonna make a joke about doctors and no. now it's saying toffee and honey. Toffee see I don't eat sweets. Uh I'll put honey in like if I'm doing Chinese cooking, I use honey. Sweet marzipan Well that would be almonds, wouldn't it? Um I'm allergic to nuts and that would fucking cause my throat to close up and I'd die. Subtle ta tangy marmalade notes. Okay, I'll tell you what I smell. Sherry. Oh, there is something there. What is that? Again, it's that. It's it's a, it's sweet. I mean, I wouldn't say chocolatey. It's not as not as not as uh, not as chocolatey as chocolate. Maybe it is the toffee there or the honey. It's not honey, no. But there is definitely the apple there. But marmalade, I don't fucking know. I don't eat marmalade. I don't eat marzipan. You know. Okay, that was fun. Uh, anyway, palates. Fresh. What does that mean, fresh? Is it like rolling in the fucking dewy September morning with your lover? That's fresh. Mellow with pear creamy peaches and pineapple. Now it says a hint of demerara sugar. Yeah, I, I did get that. Uh, a little bit, bit, bit brown sugar. Yeah, got that. Creamy peaches. Mm. Um, can't remember the last time I had a peach. Um, hang on, mellow with pear creamy peaches. The fuck does that mean? Pear, creamy peach. A pear is a pear, and a peach is a peach. They are two distinctly different pieces of fruit. Pear, creamy peaches. Mellow with pear, creamy peaches. There's no. They haven't put a comma there, so I don't know what it means. And pineapple. I think these guys are just fucking with us at this point. They're just like, ah, oh, these fucking. Cut. They'll believe anything. Um, just you know, it, it, they've got like a. They all go around in their little whiskey uh, cabal and write shit and they know that people will believe it and the rich people they you know it's like it's like supercars or guitars or all that kind of shit you're paying for a, a status or whatever you know as well they put it in the box finish i mean the fin okay so on the palate yeah that's in your mouth finishes after it's down your throat isn't it so all right let's start again
palette, fresh, mellow with pear creamy features and pineapple and a hint of demerara sugar. That wasn't a big enough mouthful. I think yeah, yeah, have another one. Don't let your dog be thirsty. Never let your dog be thirsty. What number are we on now? Is this number seven or eight or something? I don't know. We got another six months of lockdown, so this is. I'm just going to be doing these now. I might not be able to be doing whiskey for very long. I might have to go over to wine. But that could be fun. Because wine's cheaper and there's a there's a lot more nuance in wine. So we're gonna have a whole little discovery of wine together. And the good thing about wine is you don't have to fuck around with um um mixing it, you know, all that. You basically you open the bottle and depending on the age, you know, you, you basically decant it, whatever, and, and drink it and then give your opinion. I think that maybe that's a better idea for the channel. I, I, um, I don't think I want to be doing um, video games. Well, that's like easy, easy views. But I don't want views. I want I want to, God damn it, I want to do something... I just want to stop myself going insane. That's all this fucking thing is all about, is stop me going insane. And maybe entertain a few people. Hey, there's a whiskey review. Look at my big fat fucking head. No, we definitely need to fix that. But, uh, this is just basically... This is basically the Tamnabuli in a glass. So let's go for it. Colour amber gold. I mean, yeah, and that's a, that's a really nice sherry smell. It was very overpowering when I first opened the bottle, but that would be the case because it's kind of, you know, it's been sitting there for a while. But it's a lot more, it's a lot calmer now. It's not, it's, it's not as pronounced as it was. So you've got on the nose, rich, warm aromas of apple. I've said I can smell the apple. The toffee and the honey, yeah, maybe. I mean, there's sweetness there. And that's for the marmalade. Well, fuck off with that. On the palate. Hmm. Definitely at the very end, as it went down, there's a creamy. All that I'm, I'm looking, um, I got a very creamy aftertaste there, um, and there was a sweet, creamy aftertaste. Um, um, it is fresh. There's there's no alcohol kind of uh, biting alcohol or anything, and it says here fresh, mellow with pear, creamy peaches, whatever the fuck that means, and pineapple and a hint of demerara sugar. So, I think that. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely getting that the demerara sugar and that that creaminess. Uh, it's like a peach, you know. Yeah, I can, uh, yeah. So that was quite. And the finish. And it is. It just it just goes. I mean, you're not doing shots of it. It's not like you're doing you know, shots of absinthe when you're a teenager or something. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm not looking at the camera because I'm looking at the screen and trying to do finish rich, smooth and refreshing. A signature space side malt. Now I wouldn't, I'm not sure, it's been a while since I had Glenfiddich because it is, it's one of the expensive ones and I'm, you know, I'm an unsuccessful writer and unsuccessful writers drink unsuccessful whiskey let's go into their website tamnavulin that is spelled t-a-m then and you don't care so tucked away on the edge of the river livet the skilled time served craftsmen and women of craftsmen and women can we just say that craftsmen means women as well it's just 
it's cleaner as language goes isn't it you know craftsmen and craftswoman it's like it's like how we we don't say actor and actress anymore we just say actor so okay craftsmen has men in it but okay craftsperson i don't know just can we just stop with all the fucking gendered shit and just fix it we can do that language is forever evolving um because when you when you write craftsmen and women it, you're that's that doesn't really appear to be to me to be the best way of doing things the skilled times of craftsmen and women at Temnevel Inn Distillery have been creating our signature space side malt for over 50 years cool this is a this seems to be a much better website than the woodsman oh that looks beautiful look at that it's lovely explore our distillery no no uh, one day I'll maybe I'll do like a split screen and we can do all things. Um, who knows? Look at my booty, lick my booty, um, stand me on fucking one fan. What's it called? One fans, only fans. That's it. I'm an old man. I shouldn't know what these things mean. Oh yeah, I could, yeah. Fucking go and have a fist fight and rob a bank now. Fuck off. I don't want to kill a hairdresser. That's why I don't want to kill a hairdresser. All right, this is from the Master of Malt. Dot com. Um, I do. I, I don't go to these websites. It's just what pops up on DuckDuckGo when I when I search for like the whiskey things. So they might be shit, they might not be. But um, I'm just going with what's the first, the top the top stuff on the internet about what's talking about the whiskies. At the banks of the river delivered by the Tamnavulin Whiskey Distillery, there sits an ancient three-story wool carding mill built of rubble. The mill dates back to 1560, and accordingly, the... <laughs> The village, Tom the Vulin, hyphen, note the different spelling, takes its name from the Gaelic for mill on the hill. The Tom the Vulin whiskey distillery draws its water from underground springs and the surrounding hillside and takes its cooling waters from the river Livet, whose headwaters rise in the crampions in Moray before Flowing 11 miles until their confluence with the River Avon. So, yeah. Uh, £32.95. I didn't pay that. I didn't pay that. Oh, no. You got a, you know, you got a, you know, you got a fine, you got a fine place, didn't you? You know, right? Yeah. Can't, can't just be paying that all you know. Fucking hell, mate. No, no, no. Got to shop around. I'm a bit drunk. I'm a bit drunk. Okay, my next tab is uh, whiskey distilleries in Speyside. And if Scotland was the head of Britain, then Cairngorms National Park would be the brain. I mean, it's kind of insulting because it's a little bit of small brain, but you know what I mean. It's just a really large national park in the middle. So I imagine, I imagine we've spoken about the where were we i've i went for a piss and i completely forgot where we were uh space side whiskey distilleries and space side that's right so but no we don't need to read that but it's fine uh it sounds lovely doesn't it i mean i've been to a few distilleries but they were further south around basically based around uh glasgow and, and edinburgh uh lovely love fucking lovely I grew up in the south of England, and it, it uh, Scotland's like Disney World. It always was. It turns out a bit of a racist. It's like she, she'll marry a Scot, but she doesn't want to actually go up and be around the the Scottish family that that I've lost. Were far seem to be far nicer and far better than any of the fucking English people down here. Um, let's not go into that. This 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 just. 
concrete over that thing. I don't know what my point was. Without without the fucking space side, the um without the uh the, the rum the the rum the the sherry cask thing. There's something about that, yeah. It does add something to it. Um, we talk about beer, about how I don't think it helps beer to be fucking around with a taste like this. With beer, just make a decent beer, you know, don't be fucking around with all the things. But when it comes to whiskey, if you, if you, if you do, you know, do go with the bourbon barrels. Yeah, I forgot what I was talking about. You definitely pick up the sherry barrels. And that's something um, I think I think really helps whiskey and and whatnot, you know, like uh, that you're not going to really. For, I mean, it, uh, you'll you'll find it in um, particularly these days with like um, with beer and different fancy beers, and they'll say how it's made in different kind of with flavorings and that. I, I, we can we'll do this another time. We'll talk about this another time. This was supposed to be a quick one. I wasn't really feeling it. I'm not feeling that we're actually really getting at the at the, at the bottom of the thing. Oh, here we go. I found some more information about Tam um, Um It's all on masterofmalt.com. Again, thank you, Master of Malt. All I had to do was click on the read more thing. <laughs> so, founded in 1966 by a subsidiary of Invergordon Distillers Limited, the the whiskey distillery has changed little during its relatively short life. Woefully, the Tamnavulin is rather typical of 1960s constructed distilleries, and the exterior is decidedly industrial. In stark contrast to its mark. Okay, this isn't talking about a whiskey. I don't. Want, I'm not here for architecture. Fucking. I'd be more interested about the the history of because they have they have a number of different uh, Tamnavulin whiskies you have the sherry cask edition the double cask which is the same price um and the tamnavillian 48 year old 1970 vintages collection which is available here is 1868 pound 46 stillman's dram white mckay what no why have you written that oh now we go down the rabbit hole tamnavillian 25 year old stillman's dram and then in parenthesis, parenthesis, uh, White Mackay, uh, £295. But we, the last one that I drank was White Mackay, basically of the same thing. So why is it saying that, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know, Chris, why didn't you click on the link? The Stillman's Dram is a now discontinued bottling series from White Mackay, which released whiskies during the 1990s. This rather collectible dram is a 25-year-old Tamnavillain distilled before the distillery was mothballed from 1995 to 2005. Okay, yeah, that makes it. Yeah, because I, I remember reading that White Mackay distillery was kind of mothballed. No, hang on, not White Mackay. No, I'm thinking of Black Ball. I just... Fucking hell. Don't have, don't have the guy who does the research do... Be the same guy who does the, 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 the tasting. Hey friends, here's an 800 pound bottle of whiskey. You know, I mean, John brought the Coke, so why not? Is this only fair? I don't think we're really getting at the bottom of this. A lot of this shit is marketing, and as much as anything, all the stuff that we're reading on the internet is just marketing as well. So really, I'm I'm just comparing things to other things. That that's not I don't like that aftertaste. It is that it's definitely that that kind of and it and it does feel like a sweet kind of a uh, I don't remember if they if they say toffee or something, but it just feels a little bit like flat. And if you have, if you go to some of the good distilleries in, uh, in around Edinburgh, 
Um, and if you try some of the, you know, if, if you do go for um, like a good Jura or a Talisker, there's something, there's something in that. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the peaty taste, but there's that artificial taste, I think, that I'm getting at. Because um, um, that's why I don't like Shivers Regal, because Shivers, Shivers Regal, Shivers Regal, you, you will have that kind of, um, there's that, it, 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 it's like a overly, overly kind of artificial sweet taste. And um, and other whiskies that I I, mean, I can't remember to name them, but some of them just taste like you're basically sucking hose out of a you know um, you know you you're getting petrol out of a out of a uh, out of a car to steal the petrol. You know what I mean? See, I don't want to give this a bad review actually. But I'm not going to. Or am I? I don't know. But there was that aftertaste. I haven't had that aftertaste in a while. That kind of fake aftertaste of... Um, you know, like when you... um When you buy sweets at the... You know, when you were a kid and you bought sweets and it tasted... How much have I drunk? Okay, let's not look at that. I mean, it, it suddenly it suddenly starts tasting very sweet. I don't think, you know, people are supposed... I mean, what they would say would be, you're not supposed to drink half a bottle of the shit, you can't. You've got work in the morning. And my response would be, but I'm doing a review. No, it's fine. It's fine. This is really nice. Really tasty. It's um I think all the things I'm not gonna sum up. I can't sum up. The um the sherry is a very nice taste. Uh very nice taste. You know what I mean it's it's nice to have the sherry in there. It worked for grants and it's working for them. I and to sum up It was when I opened the bottle. It was very enjoyable. Um, it, was, it was sherry, and it reminded me of my grandma. And then I drank more, and it's still good. It's definitely the whiskey that you want to drink for the flavour, uh, rather than try to wash. It, you know, like ice it down for anything. I wouldn't say it's the best space side one I've had. It is. It doesn't give you the kick though in the ass. There are a lot of whiskies that you'll have. You'll open the bottle, you have a drink, and it kind of, it's, it, it's like you know when you'd like. It's like the thing with red wine. If you get a really good bottle of red wine, and you'll have a glass of it, and it and it gives you a kick like a drug, and some some whiskies do that too. This didn't do that. Uh, so it's not a special whiskey, I wouldn't say. Um, doesn't give you that that high, that kick. There's the there's the there isn't that dopamine kind of uh, uh, kick thing going on. I mean, it's it's a sipping whiskey. It's fun. It's I'm only a beginner, so you know we'll see. We'll see. We'll get into, we'll learn, as we go, we'll learn. The plague is happening. We have another six months of this in Britain. So maybe, maybe in six months we won't have found a cure for the fucking virus. But we will have found out what the best whiskey available in Britain is. Cheers. And good health to you, sir, madam, wherever you are. I hope your children live long and your parents die without suffering. Cheers.
There we go. 